This conference will now be recorded. Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, welcome to our September RMC support group. Excited to see everyone. I uh, just wanted to go around the room today and I uh, just wanted to see uh, if anybody had uh, just like would mention anything like something positive that happened, like or the most positive thing that happened to you this week or a funny story. Can we, uh, can we start with Brian and Nessa? You are on mute, Brian. Oh, hey there. All right, can you hear me? No, we can hear you. Okay. Well, you guys want to share anything that ha um anything positive that happened this week? Oh, this week. Um. Well, I have chemo again on Friday. This will be my fourth session. Um, last time I was there, uh, they looked at my tumor markers and they said that it got cut in half from when I'd started. So that was uh, good news to hear. Yes, awesome. That is great. So uh, at this point, I guess it, I guess it's working. So nice. that is awesome to hear. Yes. Wonderful. Yeah. Yes. We'll have our um, after this fourth round of keep between the fourth and the fifth treatment. Um, they're going to go ahead and do his first scan since we started the process. Um, and I just know they're going to be good. So there you go. And then Anessa, do you want to share something Ooh, that happened to you? <sighs> what have what's good this week? What's good this week? We went to the movies this week. That was nice. Um, I think, you know, we've been really, really careful in general about life um, with COVID and everything, just kind of being careful. And today we actually just got back. We went to, we decided we were going to go when like no one else was there. Literally the movie theater was like abandoned. We wiped down everything and we just had like a normal like movie trip. Yeah. And that was nice. What movie did you guys see? Uh, Shang-Chi. Oh, I've been wanting to see that. It was really, really good. Well, we're like big Marvel fans, so it was kind of, it was kind of perfect. Yeah. Yes, me and Carlton and I are big Marvel fans too. He he actually got me into helping. He's like, you have to watch all the Disney Plus shows. Got me yeah. caught up. <laughs> yeah, we've done all of them except for Loki. We keep falling asleep during Loki. Other than that. I think too, but once you get through it, it kind of blows your mind. So falling asleep on that. But yeah, that one, I think that one was my favorite um, out of all of them. Yeah. So uh, Diane and Dia, so you guys, uh, do you guys um, say anything, um, like something positive that happened to you guys this week? Well, I understood to say something positive the last week. Is correct? Well, this week or last week? We could do last week too. One thing positive is maybe you listen some noise is Nicholas playing. That's <laughs> something positive. Every day who are playing and we listen to him is positive. But uh, last week, last Sunday, uh, Diana and Nico went to the doctor, a sport, a sportive doctor uh, in, in, and the suggestion for Nicolas was play um, table tennis, ping pong. I don't know how say you in English, ping pong or mm -hmm. table tennis. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's the suggestion of the doctor for move because it's not very aggressive for the muscles because he's not dangerous and so we we take this recommendation and we go to the to the mall uh, and we both are a table and well where we live we have an apartment a flat but we in the same place is the office or 
where Diana work. So we, we have the table, the table, the table of the table tennis there. And in the evening, uh, before the song go back in the evening at, at five or six, sometimes we go in, in the last week, we, we, we went to play at least three, four times and start to move and to keep out of the player station uh, uh, is very interesting, it's great, but he start to move a little bit more, uh, more frequently. Today is not the day because today he had chemo. Today is to be relaxed, but tomorrow or the next day, very probably we continue playing uh, table tennis. Ping pong. Oh. I don't know how to say in English, a ping pong or table tennis. We call it both. I've, I've heard table tennis, ping pong. But that's good. That's fun. I mean, yeah, I get. Are you guys very competitive? Because I'm kind of competitive. Oh, you guys are on mute. Uh, that. Diane and Daniel, Daniel, you're on mute. Yes, we heard you, but we didn't understand uh, the, the last question or commentary. Oh, so, I was saying, do you, so for me, when I play games, I, I'm, I like to win and I, I like, like I'm very competitive. So I'm just wondering if you guys are like that. <laughs> okay. I don't think Brian and I have had an opportunity to meet um, or hear Diana and Daniel's story. Um, or, you know, so I'd love to know more about Nicholas. And Anessa, before they get, you speak Spanish too, right? Anessa, do you? I understand it pretty well, um, but I'm not good when it comes to speaking it. Not good, but okay. I thought I maybe you got here for it. Okay. Oh. Kind of thing does, kind of thing no, does. I, we can try to explain in English. Also, our the history of our son Nico is in the page web of of of, of Chris Johnson Foundation. We 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 wrote one year ago. One year ago, we wrote it uh, with a picture of, uh, of one day in the beach. Our sis, our daughter, the sister of Nicola, <laughs> Laura. Uh, and and him, and and you can read a very short history about us. We are a family, a mixed family, Spanish and Colombian. Diana, she is Colombian. We live in in Medellin, and and our son, when he had, he 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 was excuse me, he was uh, twelve years old was diagnosed diagnosed with cm can, I'm, I'm so sorry I don't want to you can go in and out of spanish if you need to I can, I'll, I'll okay. Okay. <laughs> we need that richie we need <laughs> more spanish <laughs> patients to... i can understand it okay well we 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 offer it in the future well, uh, for for us, it's the first time we we see you, uh, Brian. No, uh, or no, Brian. Yes, but but she was in in one meeting with us. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, well, um, we know in the future uh, more patients of South America will be here with us. Unfortunately, or fortunately, uh, we must to say the two sides. And, and we we know because in Colombia it was at least two cases before Nicolas, okay, in in Colombia. Uh, but in Spain, uh, on, we only read it about one case. It's very strange uh, in in Spain. So in the future, we must to have a, a good link with you to. To, for the Spanish people or South American people to to to, to speak about to it. speak about it and and to give all the information that Richie and other people have about this this cancer. 
So I'm Mexicana, and then my husband is Nigerian. So, um, you know, it is a family. It's a family we didn't sign up for, but, you know, if you guys ever need anything, you know, we're here. Okay. Yeah. Good mix. Yeah. Well, in USA, <laughs> it's very frequently that, I suppose, no? Uh, uh, very part of the world. That's wonderful of USA. That's absolutely great. That's give a, a, a other point of view of many things. So congratulations. I was born in Africa, Brian. I was born in a, yes, I was born in a small city in the north of Africa. It's a Spanish city and I live it in, in the north. And, and well, we are now in Medellin in South America. <laughs> So, so well. Let's go to Stephanie. Stephanie, you want to share something positive that happened this week? Um, positive. Um, so far, um, I had a good trip. Uh, for um, this week was this well in a. Two weeks, I guess it was our me and my husband's uh, anniversary, uh, for 25th anniversary, and uh, we went on a uh, trip to Florida to Orlando, and spent some time with uh, his brother and his brother's wife. So that was a good good uh, vacation for our anniversary coming up. Nice. Congratulations. That's a big milestone. 25 years. Wow. That yes. is remarkable. Maybe <laughs> Stephanie can share with the group a little bit because she hadn't, I think you've only been on one other time. Is that correct, Stephanie? Uh, I, I listened to the, the first time. Yeah. I just, okay. just listened. Mm -hmm. Do you feel up to sharing a little bit so that, that everybody will know a little bit about you and why, why you're here? um yeah yeah i can um it's uh, i can it's uh i was um um my my oldest son uh he was uh in the military in the army uh when he got sick and um uh found out after a lot of testing and um stuff we they diagnosed him with the RMC and um sent him here to MD Anderson uh and we actually live here in Houston uh Texas so we kind of like just sent him back home to get treatments and um he he did um um uh, let me see couple of different treatments uh dr chenier uh suggested for him and uh some worked really really good um and then i guess um i guess it was you know after 15 months um his uh he was fight was over and he was um he was 22 my son was 22 and this saturday is his would be his uh 25th birthday actually yeah <laughs> so that was uh my son and he was uh, uh, a specialist in the united states army and i at that at the time of his diagnosis uh just i'm sure as everyone here is, had never heard of uh rmc and it being linked to the trait uh, which my my husband has to trait. I don't have the trait, but my husband does. So, um, yeah, I think that's a little you. bit. Of <laughs> yeah, thank you for sharing. I know sometimes it's hard because I understand. I really do. But I just wanted to, you know, just so that people could be aware of what was going on. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Stephanie, um, have you decided what you're going to be doing Saturday? Do you do anything in the or? 
Um, well, it depends on this weather. Usually, um, um, the family and uh, if it's whoever his friends are still, you know, in town. Because some of them are um, they've gotten married and and stuff. So uh, we do something at his graveside, and then we'll probably just go out and. Um, we went out to eat last year because uh, uh, my my son was uh, loved the outdoors, so I I try to do stuff outdoors. But this weather here in Houston is um, <laughs> it's a hit or miss sometimes this time of year. So um, I try to plan stuff either for outdoors or indoors. You know, I have to be um, either either one. Um, but I really would like to do something outdoors this year for him. But um, uh, we just had that hurricane, so yeah, it probably <laughs> probably will be an indoor thing this year. And we will be happy to highlight his story if you would like for his birthday. If you just let us know what you would like us to do, and we can do that too. You know, to celebrate him. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. no. Victor, I think, do you want to introduce yourself and um, share um, something that positive that happened this week? Hey, can you guys hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Hey, cool. Hey, so, my name is Bernie Dean. It's actually, um, well, it's Carlos, but um, friends and family call me Carlos Dean because there's like so many Carlos's in the house. Uh, Something positive. Okay, so um, after over a year of uh, drinking, I uh, I stopped about a few weeks ago, and I was on the road of uh, cutting weight. And so far, I'm down 19 pounds. That's basically about it. Yes, I'm so proud of that thing. Well, who he is, Carlton, we don't, Carlos, we don't know who you are. Um, my, I my, know. Uh, <laughs> let's see here. Um, uh, is this better? Yes. Um, I'm trying to get this whole video thing. I, oh, there you go. Okay. Hey. You look great. Hey. What's going on? So, kind of thing, do you want to say, share why you're here and how the RMC, how you're connected to RMC? Uh, why am I here? And we only get uh, over your head, too. Come down a little. There you go. Now we get you all. I kind of set this up so I can. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So my uh my little brother uh, Carlos as well, uh, who's also Carissa's uh, husband. Well, strange. Uh, he's been fighting it for about a good four years, roughly. Uh, he gave it a good fight. Uh, it, it, we actually thought that he beat it once, and uh, just out of, out of the blue, it just came back out of nowhere. Um, some of the family were still in denial about the whole thing. Um, I tried to be there for him as much as I could. I, I felt powerless. I couldn't. I didn't know what to do to help him. Tough thing, but I know that thing was always there for us when we needed him, like with the. The oxygen chains and just being there whenever we need you there. 
I just don't want you to forget that. We continue to pray for you. We know how hard it is. Thank you for coming in. Okay. Uh, just for those of you that are still fighting this fight, man, never give up. Uh, there's a lot of people looking up to you. Well, Richie, do you want to hear something positive that happened this week? Shoot, if I can stop crying. I <laughs> um, yeah. I actually um, spent last weekend with, with my, my little small family, my son and uh, his wife and my niece. Actually, Mark cooked this huge spread. I mean, it was so good. And all I had to do was just go and sit. And so we hadn't done that in a long time. And actually, we hadn't done it since COVID. So it was just good to be, you know, amongst the family because, you know, time is precious. And, you know, even though we know tomorrow is not promised for any of us, um, I know more so now how important it is to share those memories. And we had a great time. We had a really good time. And I wanted to let Stephanie know, um, Chris passed away on September the 20th, which is um, the day after your son's birthday. So I will forever remember that. And Chris also lived 15 months after his diagnosis. And, um, you know, he, he was a warrior. So we will be celebrating him also this weekend. Uh, we'll have a balloon release. And of course, every November is his birthday and we also celebrate too. If we don't, he'll tap us on our shoulder and say, hey, you're missing something. <laughs> but yeah. you know, it's always good to keep, you know, everybody lifted. And um, it, it doesn't get any easier. It's, it's, it'll be nine years for me uh, on Monday. And uh, it's still pretty hard. Uh -huh. yeah. Oh, can I share something that happened several weeks ago? I met with Brian and Anessa and Andre. We had the best time. We went to Nipah's. Man, they ate up some food. Um, mm -hmm. We had just a wonderful fellowship. Uh, we laughed. I had never seen Andre laugh so loud the whole time I've known him. But um, it was just wonderful being able to be with you guys. I think Brian has sort of come out of his shell a little bit. Uh, <laughs> But we had a wonderful time, and, and uh, it was just such a blessing um, to be with them. And that, that fulfills my purpose when I can be and be a, a, a beacon of light for others. So I thank you guys for coming out with this old lady, and uh, we're going to do it again. My house is open. Live in Houston. We need to get Stephanie together so that she can join us and... Maybe one day we'll just fly everybody in to Houston and, and just have a big, <laughs> big party. How about that? Let's do it. <laughs> we're going to have to raise some funds and we're going to fly everybody to Houston. <laughs> we're going to party like it was 19, 1995. <laughs> What's that song? <laughs> it, was so, it was so nice to meet you, Richie. And I think, it was, you know, it was a great experience. And, um, uh, you know, it was just it, it was just nice seeing Brian. He to talked to Andre and um, Bond and and joke about some of the effects of chemotherapy, <laughs> like you know, <laughs> and and kind of like the side effects. And it was just cool that they got to bond. And I could tell, you know, when we left. You know, Brian hadn't had. I mean, he always laughs, but it was. I could tell he he like really enjoyed himself. So it was a great experience. That was wonderful. We we're trying to see if we could do something for Christmas as well. Oh, but yeah. Yeah. That'd be great. All right. Well, that made us laugh. I've cried a little bit now. I laugh, so I'm good. I'm, I'm back on the man. <laughs> Hi, Anna. How are you doing? You're on mute. Hi, I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> 
So we're uh, we're sharing something that positive that this week um so um i i, I texted richie earlier that i got my cat scan results um from my last cat scan towards the end of last week and um it showed continued improvement and i got my nephrectomy scheduled for this upcoming tuesday so week from today okay. like all good news yeah are they gonna um are they gonna do like a laser like laser are they gonna like scoop in like cut like for the surgery are they gonna do i'm sorry i missed it are they um are they doing like just the laser surgery or are they gonna like cut you open yeah so i'm gonna have um it's a laparoscopic procedure so I will have some incisions. They should be rather on the smaller sides, and, and it's um, the robotic-assisted nephrectomy. Um, that's you know pretty common for for kidney cancer. So hopefully all goes well. Yes, yes. I'm praying for you. Thank you. Definitely. We can't see all of your face, Anna. There you go. <laughs> all right. And Anna, did you speak Spanish? I do. Yeah. All right. So see Diana and Danielle. We got somebody else to can help you. Con mucho gusto yo les hablo en español. Gracias, Anna. <laughs> we are we are a half. Uh, Ana Miranda. Well, the, the Carlos Moran. Carlos Moran speak Spanish? No, nothing. Understand? Yeah, I will have a también, sí. Wow. Richie, oh, Richie, Richie. The... a new group for the Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> Richie, so. You ask most... and we deliver. <laughs> <laughs> All and right, Carlos, that means you're going to have to join us every. <laughs> Every month. Okay, great. And Carlos, where are you from? Um, nationality or where do I live? No. Uh, where, where do you live? Is donde eres? Donde vives? But where are you from? In uh, America. You are from USA. You, you are your parents or your grandparents or. Dominican Republic. Dominican Republic. Okay. 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 Ana Miranda, where, where, where is it? Yo, yo, yo nací en El Cerrado. Okay. Excuse me. And you are the person who are the cancer? Yes. Or, or you are the person? Ana. Ana. Yes. Yes, Are you the RCM, like uh, our son, the same? Oh, Sorry. do I have RMC? Yes. Yeah, I do. Yeah. With, okay, sorry. I, I, I never, so I, our English is very limited. So oh, I, and in, some okay. cases, in some cases, we I don't understand if it's the, the wife or the husband oh, or the so mother <laughs> or the mother of, 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 uh, of a baby, like our in our case, is our son. Sí, sí. Have, uh, sí, yo, yo fui diagnosticada en mayo uh, y tengo dos niños, uno que también se llama Nicolás, que tiene 11 años. Gracias a Dios, ellos ahorita están en la salud. Just for everybody else, I was just letting them know that I was diagnosed in May and that I have two yeah, sons um, who has the same name as, as Diana's son. <laughs> no. Okay, no, thank you. Uh, well, we try to, to read, we read better than listen. Our, in the high school, it was not very, uh, we were not very good <laughs> students of English, so, <laughs> but now it's necessary to, to understand. So, no, you speak English very well. <laughs> yeah, so, but, but it, it, there are some misunderstandings, there are some misunderstandings, and, um, and please, uh, Excuse us when when we have misunderstanding, uh, uh, by, because it's very frequently. Uh, 
uh, is very frequently in our business because <laughs> we have a uh, relationship with Canadian and Americans is very frequently, but our business is only money. Here sometimes could be feelings and could be worse, no? So please, uh, we, 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 we always try to, to have the best feeling for you and the, be the best question. So all the best. Uh, we, we must to do a, 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 a separate group with the Spanish <laughs> someday, someday and practice the Spanish. But, but, but for the moment, we are happy to be in this group and to practice English. So thank you. <laughs> Listen, I just want to say, if you guys want the room for a separate Spanish group, we would be delighted to make it available to you. You just have to tell us when. And we've got Dr. Anna with us, who not only is, uh, brings all of her knowledge and looks for the support, but she can also translate as well. So we're so... Uh, so great to see you back here, Dr. A. Really a pleasure to see you. I'm, again. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> um, but like I say, if you want, if you want, um, if you want the room for a Spanish speaking group, um, all you've got to do is ask and tell us when and, and we'll, we'll, we'll make it available to you. Um, and even if there's only two or three of you, um, I mean, right now we have three Spanish speakers out. Well, two, one, two, and then um, the Azudes, uh, one of you is Spanish, right? You're Spanish speaking, right? So we got one, two, three, we got four. That's enough. Mm -hmm. But eh, we got four. So you just have to shout, let Richie know, um, 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 and it doesn't even have to be a regular thing. You, it can be if you want, but if you just would like to have a group, Spanish speaking group, we'll, 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 we'll work with you. Thank you very much, Ricky. Yeah, we, we, we spoke before you, you connected that, that in the future will be clear for, for us that a uh, person like the wife of Brian, uh, Ana Miranda, also Carlos and us, we must to, to help people in South America and will be our doctors in Medellin, in Colombia, yeah. at least one of the four oncologists who are in the group, who are in the treatment of our son, at least one work it in the for a few months or one year, we, we don't know exactly. She it was a she's a doctor. She worked in the MD Anderson. She she started or she studied six months. We don't know exactly the history of her life and and on other of of, of other of the oncologists uh, studied or worked in Canada. So. We very probably uh, in, in in six months or one year or two year they will write a paper uh, in Spanish or English Spanish uh, es explaining uh, the situation of our son and we will read it uh, some papers in Br from from doctors of Brazil or of course of of Dr. Maswell uh, other hospital in in Canada who but but if in 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 USA, a percentage of the of, of the diagnosis are of people of uh, with origin in Dominican Republic, uh, Salvador, Colombia. Uh, that means that in in South America must be more cases uh, uh, and doctors who need to 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 link with you with with this group and in general doctors speak English better than the, their patients like us. So our doctors speak better English than us. So, so it's not necessary. But for the patients, we must to, to think about it, to have a, a Spanish group uh, each uh, two, 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 two times per year, something like that, maybe. Two times per, not, not every month, but two times per year, uh, have a meeting in Spanish and, and, explain the uh, and with food food and Spanish, Spanish food. <laughs> oh, 
Okay. Now, Carissa, is this is this other Moran something to do with you? Oh yes, yes. This is the other Carlos. Hello. Nice Hi. to meet you. You too. Hi. How are you guys? Oh, very very nice to meet. You. This is your brother. Yes. Oh wow! Fantastic. Fantastic. Really, really, really welcome, Bert. What well, big welcome to the group. Thank you. Nice to be here. Rick, maybe you want to tell him who you are. Oh, um, well, I, I don't, unfortunately, don't have, I don't want to say unfortunately or fortunately, but um, I don't have any direct connection to RMC um, other than, um, I'm involved with ANCAN and um, we've created this forum to provide virtual groups. Um, and um, we were very honored to come across Richie and to create the group, the RMC group for, for Richie. And um, it's now well underway and we, we're really pleased to have it. That's, so I'm here on behalf of ANCAN, that's, 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 that's it. And Rick, uh, we're sharing something that happened positive this week. So would you like to share something that happened, po um, something positive that happened? Oh, um, well, I think one thing is we found somebody to to work um, to help elect to assist Alexa, oh, nice. which is huge because it, I desperately need the help. And so Alexa, so the plan is that Alexa is going to unload some of her work onto this new, she's a young um, mother, and she actually lives close to where I am. That's how we found her. So Alexa is going to unload some work onto her, and it's going to free up Alexa, and then I'm going to be able to pass some of my work onto Alexa. Nice. And so what we're really hoping is we can develop a couple more groups this year uh, and Anna if 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 um if you run across any of your patients um or ex-patients um please send them to some of our groups I mean we we love to we, we we'd love to work with them we right now we have a prostate cancer group we have a thyroid cancer group we have a blood cancer group for any type of blood cancer. Um, we have a cancer caregivers group and we have um, a men only uh, group that we call speaking freely for men to talk about anything except treatment to which <laughs> Brian is very, very welcome. And that, that is a really great group it meets the third Thursday of the month, and we um, we just welcome people in um, to talk about anything, but we don't let them talk about treatment. So anything to do with cancer or their life, but not treatment. So, so that's what I'm sharing. Well, I just me like something positive that happened to me yeah. uh so i've been me and my niece have been experimenting with different uh recipes and we tried egg rolls and shrimp dumplings and they came out pretty good so i'm gonna try to add it to my thanksgiving menu this year uh-huh okay maybe i know where i gotta go for thanksgiving <laughs> uh. And who has everybody else shared, or was I the last one? You were the last one, Carissa. I was the last one, but I do want to go around um, asking everybody if there's anything they wanted, anything on their mind that they wanted to talk about tonight. Great. So Brian and Nessa, let's start. Go back to you guys. Is there anything that you guys want to talk about, or anything on your mind? Oh, you're on mute. Um, 
Not particularly. Uh, like I said, I'm doing <clears throat> a fourth round of chemo on Friday. Then I get my scans after that to see how it's working and I'm just uh, looking forward to seeing how that goes. Um, they have me scheduled for six rounds of chemo. So hopefully that will be enough and we can just take it from there. Um, but right now, I mean, I'm just taking it day by day and just trying to get the best out of my day that I can. Yeah, Honestly. that's what you have to do. Take it day by day. Uh, Stephanie, is there anything on your mind or um, any questions you wanted to talk about? Um, no, 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 nothing on my mind right now. <laughs> Uh, how about uh, Diana and Daniel? Is there anything on your mind or anything you guys have questions about? No? Okay. Anna, is there anything on your mind or any questions you have? Um, nothing specifically. You know, I just have a lot of gratitude. Thank you all for you know, putting this group together and Carissa for leading the group and you know staying in touch with this community and richie for all the work that you do um i'm just damn yeah, grateful well i'm grateful to be here and grateful to be part of this group um it means a lot to me and i'm, I'm so thankful you're here and yes yeah, very exciting to hear about we might have another subgroup yeah, so. Third thing, is there anything on your mind or any questions you have? At the moment, not really. Um, Richie, is there anything on your mind or any questions you have? I don't really have any questions, but I wanted to sh give a little update on Micah, uh, who's in the hospital. Actually, we have Micah, Vanina, and Caleb, all three are in the hospital at this time. I don't really want to go into detail what's going on because I don't have their permission actually, but um, just ask that you guys keep them in prayer um, because it's been a little rough journey for them. So um, that's about it as far as that is concerned. And then on Friday and Saturday, we have the virtual uh, Kidney Cancer Association Symposium. It is free to the public. If anyone is interested in joining us, I will be speaking on Saturday on health disparities and what I learned from um, the journey with Chris. Uh, Milton will be speaking, I believe, on Friday um, from the care caregiver perspective. So uh, if you get an opportunity to just pop in, just go on and register. And if you can get it, get an opportunity to pop in on some of the sessions, it would be great. And then another question is, you know, maybe think of some things that we can do. We were thinking about the holidays coming up. We want to do something fun. We don't always want this group to be depressing, but we want you to feel open to share. We want to have fun. Now. Lata is good for the soul. So we want to think of some things that we could do for our December meeting. Uh, we know we're going to have a Christmas party here in Houston for some of our EMC patients and caregivers. But what can we do for those that can't travel to Houston yet? You know, so just something to think about. Make it fun in December. Maybe. What did you say, Rick? Um, do you know the date? that you're having the actual Christmas get together in Houston? I want to say it's around December the 9th. And, and what day is that? What, what I'm thinking is that um, why not try and schedule a meeting or make the room available to you um, the same time as you have your all your people there? So, oh, okay. so people from other places like Carissa, are you going down to Texas for this <laughs> thing or not? Huh? Are you going? You are, aren't you? Yeah. I, I mean, well, I haven't talked about it, but I might have 
I might, that might be a big possibility for me. Actually. You just might have to, right? I know. But there are other people here, and, and, and then you can, we'll you can the welcome fake, them in, we'll the and they can talk to each other, and you okay. can come and talk to them. And so maybe we could, we could arrange that. Okay, because the reason we were looking at the ninth and it, it varies right now, maybe the tenth, because Andre is coming back down from Alabama. Okay. Um, his, uh, his scan. So that's what we were looking at. Okay. Well, let, let's try and coordinate. That's another thing that we got to coordinate. Anna, I forget, are you in San Jose? For some reason, I'm thinking San Jose. Is that where you are? I'm in Pasadena in LA. Pasadena. Oh, okay. Pasadena. I don't know why I thought. I'll go to California. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Richie, Richie, when I meet you in person, I'm going to give you a big hug. I'm going to give you a big hug too. Yeah. My, um, my sister, um, my sister used to live in South Pass. Now she lives in Studio City. Yeah, it's um, beautiful here. I have a, may I ask you one technical question for your, for a word of advice for somebody in a completely different group. Okay. Sure. Um, we've got, we've got somebody in our caregiver group. We have a caregiver group, by the way, which is for caregivers. Um, so any caregivers in here can also think about attending that group. It's Carissa attends the group and it's a very nice group second and fourth Mondays, second and fourth Tuesdays of the month. And we, we'd love to have you in. The second meeting of the month, we do talk about bereavement issues. We don't in the first meeting of the month. So- well, I think it's first and third Tuesdays of the month. First and third, two, first and third Tuesdays, you're right. Sorry, it's been a long day. I started at 6.30 this morning. Um, we have a lady in there who's a Kaiser patient. And if I remember, you're, you're at Kaiser, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I work for Kaiser. She's having an awful, and her, her brother, her husband has metastatic appendiceal cancer. And she is having an awful time finding docs that she can work with. And I'm just wondering if maybe I could connect her to you and you may know some people that you might want to suggest. Sure. Where does she live? Do you know what, what uh, part of California? She lives in um she lives in Orange County, maybe Fulton, okay. somewhere like that. Okay. Sure, sure. I can, um, I can, you have my information. I can give you my information and I think you can I, pass it along. I think I do, but that would be so wonderful. Um, she's just, and the biggest problem is she really wants to get over to City of Hope to do some surgery. And she's having an awful time because she feels that the surgeon is not, doesn't have the qualifications. And apparently, you probably know a lot more, but apparently, the appendiceal surgery is pretty complicated surgery. Yeah, um, yeah, I can, yeah, I can certainly reach out to some of my contacts um, in oncology uh, and uh, see who they might recommend for her. Oh, that would be fantastic. So I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure I've, we've got you in the database. But I'm just okay. gonna check, and if not, then I'll, I'll okay. take it. But thank you yeah. so much. Yeah. Yeah, so I work at the bigger hospital in Southern California in Los Angeles. We're sort of like the referral center for for Southern California. Sounds so, good. yeah, for Kaiser. So some of the sub sub specialists will be at my medical center rather than at some of the other ones. So I can certainly reach out and, yeah, and see I what mean, I can help. And I've said that to her before that she needs to see if there is somebody in Sunset that would um, that that could help her um yeah. but i don't have to tell you it's sometimes it, it's hard to find your way around um i was a kaiser patient uh when i was diagnosed with cancer i was i was a kaiser patient but in northern california not i wasn't in the southern california system so i do know the system quite well but that would be so wonderful 
So I'm thank you so much for agreeing to do that. Sure, happy to do it. Thank you, thank you. Um, so um, I did want to say that we will have a very interesting webinar at the end of the month. Um, it's going to be on the 30th of September. And I don't know if any of you have ever come across a woman called Nancy Novak. Um, and she has put together something called Nancy's List. She's a stage four ovarian cancer survivor. She was diagnosed around 2004 or 2005. I know her from many, many years ago when I lived in Northern California. And she, um, she has this list, nancyslist.org, with loads and loads and loads of cancer resources on it. Some of them are health resources, some of them are complementary medicine resources, some of them are financial resources, some of them are resources for kids camps um, where, you know, where if the kid has cancer or if a parent has cancer, there are camps that, that are available for the kids. I mean, she's, she's loads and loads of resources. So we've invited her to uh, do a webinar on the 30th where she's going to pick her 10 favorite links her 10 favorite sites and talk about them i don't know what they are we probably won't know in advance we're going to meet with her next week but i think it might be a really really nice webinar with a lot of very helpful resources so i'm just giving that a a quick plug if i may well and i had something on my yes. mind to share. Good. So I had an idea uh, just to build up like RMC awareness that I was talking to Richie about. Um, so I thought it'd be cool like if we did a challenge, um, kind of like what they did the ice bucket challenge for MLS, for MLS, but I didn't want to do like an ice bucket challenge. I wanted to do something that um, pretty much anybody could do, but would be fun to do. So. I wanted to share a link. Um, it was something I came across from a minute to win it challenge, but I think like we could build it into a challenge. But basically, in this challenge, um, you basically um, have to put like put a cookie on your forehead and just using your face muscles, get it into your mouth. Uh, so I'm going to share my this link. Or this video. Do so, you guys see that video? No, oh. we, we would have to share your screen. Oh yeah, here we go. You see oh. you okay, you guys see my screen? Yes. Okay. The rules for tonight's first challenge. I have my favorite game. Check it out. You'll love it. It's face the cookie. The human face is composed of many muscles with two large groups that help make a smile or frown. In this challenge, the contestant must transport a biscuit from their forehead to their mouth using only their facial muscles. If a biscuit drops, the contestant must take another biscuit and start again. You all set? We'll check. Figure on the forehead. You can start with one up there. Very good. You have a minute to win it. All the best. Yeah. Good luck. God bless.
parents who seem to be enjoying this. Seems to be risky. <laughs> Am I still sharing? Or? Yeah. But if you click on the screen, it'll there you go. Oh, and perfect. I just want to translate for everybody. A biscuit is a cookie. <laughs> just in case you were wondering, just for a little translation, because you add Spanish to English, I have to do English to English here. <laughs> so. Yeah, so I was thinking that we could have something where um, we introduce ourselves and that we're doing this cookie, this face cookie challenge and I don't think we have to do as many as that in a minute, but like maybe see how fast you can get one cookie into your mouth. And if you can't do under a minute, you fail. Um, and that this cookie challenge is to build um, awareness for renal medullary cars, uh, carcinoma. And I think it would be helpful to just say that renal medullary carcinoma is a kidney cancer, is a very, uh, rare aggressive kidney cancer um, that um, usually impacts very young athletic people with the sickle cell trait. I think, and then do the cookie challenge and then I then challenge other people to do it and see how, how fast they can do. I think that would be something like fun that people can post. To build awareness. Just wondering if anybody had any thoughts or. I think we would have to, you know, I guess write up the rules and everything so everybody would know what they're to do and and how should we share this and hopefully it'll go viral. I don't know. We could try. Yeah. So because. Yeah, I can write like uh, write up some rules and I'll send them to you, Richie. Okay, sounds good. All right, everybody's what what what's going on here? You're very you got a silent group tonight, Richie. How come they're so quiet? I don't know about them, but I've been up since three forty-five. Our lights went out with the storm. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And did everything come back? Uh, five hours later, the lights came on, but it was the wind. It looked like a war zone outside. Trees all oh, down, yeah. and but we didn't get much rain, so I could deal with the wind. But once I woke up, I've been up all day. <laughs> Must oh, be a Tuesday. Wow. You've been up too, Carlos. Yeah, I, uh, I get up every morning about three, four o'clock. Um, how many MP? And I uh, work about sixteen-hour shifts every day. Oh my gosh! Yeah, so, <laughs> well, um, I was lucky enough not to be out during the uh, that big storm last week. So that was a plus. It did hit the Jersey area. I think weren't you affected? Uh, Clarissa, I uh, know. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I luckily didn't have any uh, near my house, but I mean, all the towns are like all the towns around me was filled with water, so you couldn't really go anywhere. So you you didn't have any damage or anything like that, Clarissa? Mm -mm. No, thankfully not. I mean, I was. I almost left work later and I almost got stuck. I would have gotten stuck in the city if I stayed. Oh my there. gosh. So, but luckily I left at a good time. Um, and Carlos, did you, 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 um, did you have any 
significant adverse experiences as an EMT? I mean, because I'm assuming you're, you're working in Jersey as well, right? Yes. Uh, how, how was the storm? How was Ida for you? Uh, a little calm. Uh, a lot calmer than uh, than Sandy. <laughs> oh right! Wow! Wow! You did you, you you didn't finish pulling anybody? Uh, finish up pulling anybody out of flooded cars or anything like that? No, no. Um, for the most part, people abandon their cars all over the place. So thankfully, nobody was hurt. pretty low key. You know, I just want to reiterate that this this group is for you guys. So, um, you know, come with with ideas, suggestions of what you would like to see or hear. You know, a lot of it is spontaneous, but it is for you. And we can make it as fun as possible. We don't want it to be a sad group, but we want you to have a platform where you can share what you're feeling, feel comfortable. And then just, um, talk with your peers and maybe they can offer suggestions to you. Um, it's your group. We just coordinated it for you. And I don't know what happened to Andre tonight. I mean, he's usually on and he was supposed to be the moderator, but I don't know if, if that storm went up toward Alabama. I thought it was going to Louisiana, Florida and then out. So I'm not certain. How is he doing, Richie? He's doing very well. His scans were clear again. And so he doesn't have to come back until December. So he's wow. doing very well. He has a great appetite. That's good. Yeah, he's doing very well. So um, I think he's looking at retiring from uh, the service and, and moving forward. That's good. Ryan, this is my first time meeting you, but um, I, I know you were diagnosed uh, a little bit after I was. I just was wondering how you're doing. Um, I'm doing well. Uh, like I said, I have my fourth session uh, on Friday, this upcoming Friday. Um, everything's been going pretty well for me. Um, they uh, look at my cancer marker uh, they tested me for my cancer marker, and it. it's been cut in half since I've started chemo, which is good. Um, chemo handling chemo has been not too bad so far, other than some of the side effects like itching. Uh, itching is terrible. Can't say I get it. that too. I get it too. <laughs> yeah, like like that. I get this burning thing when I wash my hands, and then I get my back itches. <laughs> Yeah, Every, everything <laughs> irritates my skin. Every single thing I put on it yeah. irritates it. Do you have yeah. any, uh, how do you handle it? Or do you have any suggestions on how to You know, I'm, I'm kind of lucky because I feel like usually it kind of just goes away and, it, you know, I just give it enough time. Um, one time I went for a walk and I came back and my feet felt like they were on fire and I put mm. them like in a cool place and that helped a lot. Um, so I feel like the cold helps a little bit. Um, and then um, I've had I've had to have my chemo postponed because my um, neutrophil count is low. And so I kind of got a little break and that, that's helped me too. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> the, uh, applying cold compresses is, is usually what helps me, but yeah. it just feels like I get the worst in my hands and in my wrists, but sometimes it'll just jump all over my body and I'm just yeah. just trying to find like ice packs to put like on random places just to keep it at bay. And I'm you know the other thing, them. yeah, is if I don't scratch, it gets better. Like scratching makes it worse. It does, it really does. <laughs> I've, I've, I've gotten to a point where I can kind of ignore it most of the time. But there's just some days where I just like I, I need something cold or it's gonna drive me crazy. Yeah, yeah. Um yeah. Wait, when's your scan? Um, so they said they're gonna uh, do my next scans between my fourth and fifth one. So I guess sometime after this upcoming week, sometime I guess they'll scan me again and see how everything's good doing. 
Is that the first one since you started chemo? Yeah. Because I got uh, I got I got my nephrectomy before I started chemo, and then um, they saw that it, it spread to part of my lungs. So um, yeah, um, they're gonna scan and see uh, if it, there's been a reduction in the spreading. He has um, on the spread. He had like one, um, like two centimeter, like growth on one of his lungs, and then um, like. They said no lymph node involvement, but some um, other like lung node involvement. Um, but that was it. So I mean, hopefully when we go back, they're like, there's nothing. Yeah, hopefully, yes. Yeah, we'll be sure. praying for you. Okay. Thank you. So you know, I, I'm I'm listening to you about this. It sounds to me like neuropathy is is what you're dealing with yeah and there we talk about that in several several of the groups and i i also suffer from neuropathy it's left over from the treatment that i went through many years ago but it, it's left with me so i'm really empathetic um and um a couple of things that i would i would suggest brian where are you are you being treated at md anderson Yes. And the doctor, um, Rick, did let us know that they don't think it's neuropathy because of, um, like, when Brian explains it, right, it's not tingling, it's specifically itching. Um, and just Nurse Leah, which is Dr. Rosal's nurse, kind of so far, she doesn't say, like she has said, it doesn't sound like neuropathy, but the carboplatin and paclitaxel, for whatever reason, Andre said the same thing. I don't know why, but there's a mix that it creates itchy, um, which you know well i but, mean the carboplatin i mean and correct me if i'm wrong anna but carboplatin um is is pretty famous for neuropathy <laughs> i mean it, it it's it, neuropathy is really common with with with, with the carboplatin alone yeah um, i think i think um it, it can do both neuropathy like peripheral neuropathy the burning of you know hands and feet yes. and then for like the the itching i think is would be considered a paresthesia right so it's right. not like uh it's not in the the distal nerves but it's you know it's the same kind of pathway in terms of it you know these drugs affect the nerves and then it, it manifests as itching yeah, I mean, I, I was actually really talking about the burning rather than the itching. And um, uh, one of the things I was going to suggest to you um, is to see if you could get a palliative care doc on your team. Because, you know, there's a big misunderstanding oftentimes that palliative care is end of life. It's not end of life. It's about quality of life and some of the palliative care docs um have really good tricks up their sleeve for dealing with side effects and um it might be worthwhile just getting one on and then talking to them about the about managing some of these side effects we've seen that work pretty well in 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 other places i know I'm dicing with death a little bit here <laughs> because, because of Anna, and I know she may not be in favor of this, but we we love we love palliative care. We think that those docs really they've really made a difference for many of the people that we've navigated. No, I totally agree. I, in fact, I, I, speak, I was speaking to a colleague of mine who's a palliative care doctor, and he said, well, come and see us if you need it. <laughs> And I agree. I think it's, you know, it's especially for symptomatic management of side effects, it's yeah. very, very useful. Yeah. I mean, in Anderson, uh, they call it supportive care. Okay. Yeah. So and is there anyone very, like Richie? Is there any, is there, are there any supportive care doctors from your experience that you found to be good? The ones that we had over at MD Anderson, I don't really remember their names, but the entire team was very good um, because Chris was having pain. He was having nausea and vomiting as the side effect from the chemotherapy. So they were able to adjust his medication where 
it alleviated a lot of the nausea, which was the side effects from the chemo and the pain. So I found them to be extremely helpful and, you know, just adjusting his medications. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Because so, so, you see, what happens a lot of times is that, and we've seen it, is that the oncologists, um, they're not as up on the side effect medicines as the doctors who specialize in managing the side effects. Mm -hmm. But some of the docs are resistant. And we've seen, I mean, there was a situation where we, we worked with this lady whose mom had lung cancer uh, at City of Hope. And the oncologist was really high up in the food chain. They couldn't get, they couldn't get a referral to the to the um, palliative care group, the side what, what, symptom management group, or whatever they call it. At, at, and supportive, supportive and just couldn't supportive. get a referral. Mm -hmm. And we just said to them in the end, they said, you know, a lot of these hospitals, you don't need a referral from your doc. Just call them up and tell them you want help. And they did that. And they found the most wonderful um, palliative care dog. So don't don't sit there and suffer. Let the palliative care folks come in and help you. And the earlier you put them on your medical team, the better off you are. And you have to probably ask for them because they don't voluntarily tell you about the supportive That's care. Right. It's such a caring and relaxing atmosphere. Um, and I just found it very comforting and beneficial, Chris. Absolutely, absolutely. And you'd be amazed what they, the sort of stuff that they've got there for you, things you don't think are available. You know, you could get massages. <laughs> you get massages from the palliative care docs and acupuncture from the, um, I mean, here's another thing that both of you might want to consider because we've seen this work. Um, People have gotten a lot of relief for this, for, for both itching and neuropathy from um, from acupuncture. The, the problem is it's not long term, so you have to keep going back. And I do know that KP has KP has ac, ac, in, in Northern California. I don't know about Southern California, but in Northern California, KP has acupuncturists that work the infusion rooms. And so they will they will actually give you acupuncture whilst you're sitting in the infusion chair. And I don't I don't know about um, uh, in in California, but you know avail you avail yourself of the palliative care docs because they're very often they're they they're really really great docs. And I think it's out of pocket. I know back in 2012, the insurance did not cover it, but um, we did do the acupuncture and the massages were great, but it's well worth it. We'll pay for you to get an acupuncture and a massage. Yeah, and but uh, you know, I think you might find today at, at MD Anderson, I, Kaiser, it's, in, it's um, I, I, you don't have to pay extra. Maybe you have to pay your copay, whatever your copay is, but you don't have to pay extra. But um, I've got a feeling at MD Anderson that it might all be there. But, you know, start by talking to the palliative care docs about ideas that they have for you to handle some of these crummy symptoms, because they may have, or they may have meds. I mean, um, you know, I've taken, um, um, just gone out of my mind, uh, with an Gabapentin. Gabapentin, Neurontin. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've, I've used Gabapentin and Neurontin uh, when my neuropathy has been really bad. Um, and I actually thought originally that you had to take it continuously, but I've con been told that you can, you can take it um, just at the time, topically, that, that you're, you're having the issues. But there is there is stuff out there to help you and i'm not suggesting you rely on the drugs but there is stuff out there to help you did you try anna did you try um gabapentin for your for the burning 
you know, mine was so transient that I just kind of gave it time and it goes away. Like it lasts a mm, couple minutes. And so I just have to write it out. Okay. Um, you know, it's a more of a nuisance. I would say it doesn't interfere with my um, quality of life. Yeah, I tend to get it now. Um, I tend to get it now when the weather changes and it gets cold. Um, in my feet and in my heels, especially. Um, so, so think about it. Just a suggestion. Mm -hmm. But this is why we have these groups. So you guys can talk to each other and we can come up with stuff. So if you've got other things that you want to raise like this, this is the real benefit of having peer groups because you all face these same issues, either directly or as caregivers. And, and so we can bring light on some of these issues and try and get you to, uh, maybe think of some solutions to help you. So, um, you know, on that score, um, ANCAN is actually, this won't mean a lot to you. It will mean something to Anna though. Um, we, we have a poster that we're presenting at ESMO, the European Society for Medical Oncology this weekend, um, on the value of um, the virtual peer support groups. And we did, a, um, we did a survey of our participants in our prostate cancer group. And then we analyzed the results and we wrote them up. And um, it's pretty amazing. Um, what we found i'll send you the i'll send the, the poster to to richie and to anna afterwards and you you can you can take a look and um we were also invited to present it at the american urological association um but then they turned their conference into a virtual conference and so they gave us the choice of being able to present it next may in new orleans so we said we'll we'll go to New Orleans and we'll present it there. That's what that's what we're doing. So. But it's you know it's just this value of talking to your peers. All right, I think that is great. Great opportunity. Congratulations on your poster selection being selected. Um, this coming year, we'll probably do some more and we'll probably open it up to everybody. So all the different groups that we have, we'll see what we come up with. Sounds great. We're always looking for opportunities to get our EMC out there. <laughs> and we're working, I don't want to say too much yet, but, but um, I had an idea this week um, and we're working on the possibility that we may and it's going to take a while but maybe we'll, we'll, we'll try and put putting a grant together to make um clinical trials in rmc more available for people to participate with if they um if they can't get down i mean what, what we like to see when I say we, I'm speaking for Carissa and Richie and myself, is um, we'd like to see much easier access to the RMC trials at MD Anderson than currently exists. Um, the, the, the financial constraints are pretty heavy. And so if we can, if we can do, try and ease that it would be successful and we're thinking about ways we can put that together anna you were going to say something yeah i was going to ask do you know for the patients who have participated in the couple of clinical trials that are being done in rmc how they've done on those those combination of treatments do you know preliminarily richie 
Uh, I know Andre was on it on one or two and even immunotherapy, but, uh, and he's done well. I don't really know too much about the other ones that are on the trial. Um, but what I understand, some are doing well and some are not doing as well. So um, Dr. Masal, I guess, really hadn't got to the point where he could really report the results as of yet. But um, I'll reach out to him again and just see if he can give us some data regarding, because we don't get an opportunity to meet everyone to, that come to Houston. Um, I know he does mention the foundation and it is up to them to reach out to us, um, you know, because of patient confidentiality. So there are several I know that are on the trial, um, but as of now, I don't really know, you know, too much, except for Andre. So he was on it for some time. Excuse me? He, he, he was part of the clinical trial for a little bit. Yes, yes. Okay. Have you have you talked directly with, with Dr. Masul, Anna? Yeah, when I was first diagnosed, um, my a good friend of mine reached out to him and um, we spoke on the phone and he he's been in touch with me and my oncologist. So um, my oncologist um, basically follows his recommendations on you know my treatment and treatment plans i mean you know i he, he's so open and also you know just from the standpoint of professional courtesy i bet you that he would share with you some of what's happening with the trial if you if you if you spoke to him you know he's so yeah i'm sure he was yeah i was just curious well. if you had heard if it was like yeah. you know something incredibly promising or if the results are kind of mixed mm. don't 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 know but one of the things i've seen since we've been running this group is that for a lot of patients it's it's very difficult for them to get to um, MD Anderson. And we have a source now where we can help them with travel and accommodation. But even if they have travel and accommodation, there are a lot of people that cannot cover their medical expenses at MD Anderson. So what we're trying to figure out is if there's a way we could raise money for the medical expenses, and try and match it with the travel and accommodation so that people that are worthy causes who live in other parts of the country or even who live in 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 the east texas who don't have good medical insurance if we could make the trial the rmc trials available to them. right richie that is correct we're hoping we are praying that we can get this going yeah. you know insurance is, is the biggest problem you know we can get them here and 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 housing paid for but of course the medical expense is an issue as rick said yeah, yeah, yeah. so we're working on it we just need the South to expand Medicaid and we can get some things done. Right. All right. Well, I'm going to leave you guys because I've got to run back and see how the MS group is getting on. Um, if any of you know anybody who lives with multiple sclerosis, we have a very good multiple sclerosis group too. They're great people. So, uh, and they're always available to help. And um, Anna, I will connect you with Aaron and thank you so much. And um, I'll see you guys next month, if not before. Yes, sir. I'll be talking to you pretty soon, so I'm sure. All right, well, you have a good evening. Okay, take care, everybody. Good night. Sure. Good luck next yeah. week, Anna. Thank you. Does anyone have anything else they would like to talk about? Otherwise, we will allow you guys to get your rest. And we appreciate you coming on tonight and Clarissa for moderating. And by the way, my books are coming in 
I hope Thursday so I can get them in the mail to those that hadn't received one. Along with the REMC shirts. So we, we're going to be out there. <laughs> Anybody have anything else to say? If no, Clarissa, you want to close us out? Oh, the next meeting will be October the 12th. And we'll send out the reminders again. Well, thank you everybody for coming and sharing. Um, loved hearing everybody's positive stories this week. And I hope that you guys have um, enjoyed the rest of the month. Bye, guys. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.